So this is our um, Catanio CM221 crane. It's a um, really versatile crane for little sites, little residential or small commercial sites. So it takes up about a uh, 3.8 meter um, square platform uh, plus the outrigger. So here we have um, it's sitting on a uh, steel plate um, system at the base. And, and this, this one's great, it acts like a little uh, cherry picker type thing, so we've got a hydraulics uh, on, on the ramps, uh, on the outriggers here, so it's really easy to, to level off and, and back in and onto site. And the wheels stay on, as you see here, so when you're backing it onto site, you can actually slew the crane, so, so you can move it in 45 degree angle or whatever angle you like, so you just don't have to back it up, you can actually turn the crane as you're getting it onto site. So it's great for getting into those tight little sites. And then the uh, counterweights on this crane are, are side counterweights. So when we lower the crane, we can lower it completely down and not take any counterweights off or anything, and we can move it around the site. Um, then uh, there's a, 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 a hitch system which hooks up to a digger or a small truck that you can push it around the site and this sort of thing. Uh, we transport it around the um, city here with on a uh, digger transporter, like a low loader truck. We just push it up onto that so that these wheels are rated to 25 kilometers an hour so clearly it's not rated for traveling on the road but although we can can get the system that, that we can do that with but it's uh it's not really worthwhile push it up onto a little uh, low loader uh, truck is, is no problem at all um, it's pretty simple um, and the whole idea of the, the having this this sort of small crane on a side is so uh, it's a real ease of construction, so all the timbers that come in go exactly where they've got to go, the reinforcing, everything like this, uh, right to putting tarpaulins over areas you're working on, so we'll pick it up with a six metre bit of scaffolding or something on one end and act like a big pirate sail and, and drag it up and over. So it saves a hell of a lot of lifting for all the team, um, and it means on the tight little site like we've got here, trucks come up the driveway we can we can unload them straight away and, and they can be stacked wherever they're going in the site without you know two or three uh, builders coming off what they're doing to, to unload the truck and everything like this so so the huge benefits and uh, huge savings in, in labor uh, when you've got one of these on site and then uh, the operation of it is uh, really easy so the whole idea was when, when I've uh, got into these you know quite a while ago now was to have easy and simple cranes to use so we didn't have to spend a lot of time maintaining them and teaching the guys and all sorts of things so they're the simplest cranes you can get you know I spent a lot of time in Europe um, sourcing the best models that I could find um, and talking with the factories and that there and we've brought several of these in now and sold them to some really uh, reputable uh, building firms who are using them and, and just raving about them so the uh, you know cost of building in New Zealand is just ridiculous at the moment, and huge cost in that is labour. So if you can reduce that, you'll save a fortune. So uh, you know, and and then speed up your builds as well. So for having one of these, you know, it's an initial cost for sure. But you know, if uh, if you really want to um, you know make some savings overall in your business and invest in your business, this is the way to go. Because the um, you, you know after it's probably two years maybe it pays for itself and you've got a free crane for the rest of the you know the rest of the time you're building so you know because we bill it back to the client at a reasonable rate we don't have, we reduce craneage you know we have mobile cranes and things on site you know a massive amount we, we might bring in a, a mobile crane if we've got to lift in some precast or something you know outside its reach but there's a huge range in these cranes right from uh, this one here is a 221, so this has got a 22-metre uh, uh, reach. Uh, we've got 600 k's at the end, and we, we can lift a maximum of 1.8 tonnes. And we go down, I've got another one at my factory, where it's, uh, it's a 20-metre 20, 20 reach, and that's uh, 600 at the end again, but it's uh, slightly, it's 1.5 tonne. And right up to, uh, we can go to 45 metres long with uh, 1.5 tonne. So it's a massive range of, of different types of models. So we can look at all those uh, at the end of this video. We'll, we'll put up some um, specs of the other cranes. But, um, you know, some of the cranes you've got counterweights that get stacked on. 
and uh, the w wheels they track up and then they pull them up on site and then the wheels get taken off. All very, very simple to erect and this sort of thing. And, and to maintain them, we've got a, uh, a, a rigging crew that um, go around and do a maintenance uh, program for all of the cranes as well. So the licensing for the guys driving them is pretty simple. We uh, organise all of that. And uh, once you get your license, um, you know, it costs, I don't know, sort of 1100 to 1300 dollars to sit that, and then you've got that for life. And then, then maintaining them during the course of the construction is basically you're greasing the slew ring and things like this. And then, alongside that maintenance program with uh, the company we use, you know, we just tell you what's got to be done. So, running costs each year is maybe uh, close to maybe 12 to 1500 dollars a year with um, just general maintenance and um, and then the licensing which is like a warrant of fitness each year they get checked every year so yeah and then this crane here as you can see we've put some um, shrink wrap just on these outriggers mainly because we're protecting the crane we've got our, our concrete um, deliveries here and all of the pumps and things like that so we get a bit of splatter so we, we've, we've just that's why these are um, covered over here all right and now we'll, um, we'll start to operate the crane and we'll show you how it goes so we're going to uh, fold the crane up and lower it down. So it's about a uh, five or six minute procedure. So we'll speed it up a little bit. But um, so it's really simple. So we bring the trolley to the centre of the um, jib section, where a specific point, and then uh, I go and alter a couple of buttons on the on the crane um, uh, uh, panel inside the box there, on the side of it. It's really simple. Two switches, and then we use exactly the same remote to uh, lower it with, so uh, let's give it a go. So it's mainly down, it will come right down, but to put it right, uh, this main mast right down, I've got to lower the jockey wheel down to give it support, so we'll leave it there for now. We're going to raise it back up and um, show how, how easily it is to re-erect and get working on the side again, so pretty simple. There we go, so it's a simple matter of raising the uh, upper section first, just holding the button there, the um, compressor builds pressure, we're going to take this up five meters above the main mast there, about there, and then to raise the mast, that's, that goes there, and we're just watching all of the cabling and making sure all the uh, systems are working properly. See? You see it start to lift soon? Yeah, so it's all... Um, Here we go. Up. So this is on three phase power as well, it can operate on single phase power. But on three phase power, we can do three operations at a time when we're using the crane like slew, hoist, and trolley out. Whereas on uh, single phase, you can only do one operation at a time. So, uh, pretty simple. The, uh, so there's no problem with whatever power you've got on site.
back into operation mode. Simple, two switches, bang, bang. We close in the box, so we turn that over. Start back down, restart the crane. And now we just check the limit switches, so we run the trolley out to the uh, to its limits. So everything about the crane is, uh, is, uh, is on sensors and uh, limit switches, so you can't lift too much. Uh, lift anything too heavy or too far out that the trolley will actually stop on its limits. But after we erect the crane each time, we've got to check the limits. So here, stop any moment. There we go, it stops just before there. We bring it back up, pull the hook up, and the hook will go up to a certain point and then stop. And I've got my finger on the trigger, so it stops at that point so you can never, never do any damage. Just putting that off switches. and she'll stop on the limit switch coming close to the main mast. Right, she's just there. So it's 100 millimetres off. And that's us, ready to operate. We'll do a test lift with the uh, maximum weight um, shortly, but um, we don't need to see that. But what we end up doing there is we'll end up, we've got a uh, test weight that's the maximum limit that can lift at the tip. We'll lift that up, we'll drag it out, and we'll make sure the crane... Uh, stops um, us, us at a certain point, it's about two or three metres from the end and that's when we know that we've, we've got maximum uh, lift and all the sensors are working properly and we do that each week.